I'm Scott Hum Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today it is bright, it is sunny, it is really windy, and I'm out for a walk. I'm doing about an hour, getting some exercise, getting some fresh air, getting stabbed in the shoulder by nettles, and uh, so <laughs> these beautiful flowering plants everywhere. They, they'll prick you if you get too close, so you want to be a little bit careful of those. Today, I had someone ask the question, well, they went out to Ometepe, and they experienced a lot of mosquitoes. So they're wondering, is Nicaragua really for them? What are the mosquitoes like? So let's talk about the mosquitoes here. Wow, the wind is blowing the trees into my face. We're gonna talk about the mosquitoes here in Nicaragua. You don't have to worry about them today with this kind of wind, they can't fly. We're gonna see you right after the bump. You know, it's, uh, it's good timing. Nicaragua is generally a pretty windy place, and that alone means mosquitoes aren't as bad as you may think they are. Now, living here in the tropical zone in Central America, you are, of course, aware that mosquitoes are a risk. This is the place famous for malaria and other tropical mosquito-borne diseases. Of course, you have subtropical and temperate ones as well. You're used to Zeta and West Nile up in the United States. We have dengue and chikungunya and malaria, those kinds of things down here. So most people are familiar with that and it causes a bit of concern. And of course it's worth discussing. Now of course like anywhere where you are in the country is going to matter a lot. If you're on a mountain or you're living in a big city mosquitoes are going to be minimal. If you're on an island or near large fresh water like Lago Nicaragua you're going to have a lot of insects, mosquitoes included, and so this, because a lot of people who vacation come down to Nicaragua and they and they focus on places like Omotepe, which is what prompted this question, you're going to end up with an experience with a lot more mosquitoes than normal Nicaraguans have to deal with. So if you experience some places like Omotepe, for example, you're going to experience a lot of mosquitoes. And of course, pockets of mosquitoes can happen anywhere in the country. Anytime you have standing water, they're going to be attracted. But some places like Omotepe are going to have extreme amounts because they're completely surrounded by fresh water. There's no way to treat it. And it's an island, so you can't get away from the water. So the combination means there's going to be just lots and lots of mosquitoes. And at that point, it got so windy, I was completely unable to continue filming. The audio actually held out really well, and I'm, I do want to mention, I'm going to break in, it's completely disruptive to what we were saying, but on yesterday's video I had the dog eating a bit, and I mentioned, you know, I'm sorry for the sound, and a, no, a really surprising number of people are like, we didn't hear a single thing. So I want to point out, because people were like, you know, some other shows we watch, we get some wind, we get some stuff, what are you doing? So I'm going to show what I'm doing and just mention this for those who are interested. It's going to be a real quick aside. So I use GoPros. I've got a 9, an 11, and a 12. I think the 12 works better, but I don't know that the audio or mic has changed between these particular models. I do, however, recommend the 12. You can get it for $2.99 if you're getting the plan. It's not generally worth getting an older model unless you're going really old and getting it really cheap because it's used. Otherwise, $2.99 for the 12, it really is the, the current, the best one. 13 will be out in September. We have no idea what to expect. So we take that, that GoPro and then we add this to it. This is the Media Mod Kit. It's just a little thing that basically allows me to add external mics and stuff. I can plug in an external mic to this, and I used to do that a lot when I had a lavalier. I do have a, a replacement lavalier now, but I haven't had to use it in a while, so I actually haven't played with it. So I normally use this built-in mic. You can't really see it, but it's on here. I'm gonna take this off. There's a little tiny mic on the side. It, it doesn't, it wants to show my face instead. And you can see it there in the corner. And it's a bi-directional mic. I can choose to have it point backwards at me, forwards at what I'm looking at, or both. Uh, and then this is called a dead cat. This is a little, in this case, foam. Sometimes they're fake hair goes over that, that does a lot to cut out the wind. The GoPro units also have a wind reduction algorithm built in. You have to turn it on, but I do, because I'm outside all the time, so you just want it. It does a fantastic job. I can't believe how much wind it actually cuts. This combination, of because this takes a lot of wind out, that microphone is good in the wind in general, the GoPro engineering is excellent. It's a great microphone, great everything. Like this is really a surprisingly good package. We kind of joke around with like, it's just an, an attachment for hooking up other mics. The reality is, is this is one of the best mics you're gonna be able to use in an easy, so if you're vlogging, this is really fantastic. And the wind reduction in there, its algorithm is so good because it knows its microphone. And, and has a lot of processing power in the 11 and 12, the 9 not so much, uh, it's able to really take that wind out. So I really don't get that much. 
I then use Final Cut Pro. That's the Apple products. It's not free. It's about $300, but you don't pay very often. It's not like annually or anything. Uh, and that has a couple of tools. One is noise reduction. It has an algorithm for noise reduction. You can turn that on. It alerts you if it feels it's needed. So I don't have to look for that. Every so often, I will get that. It just says autocorrect, and it does a little bit to reduce wind. It doesn't enhance anything. It just cuts some of the wind out, and only if it detects it. Then I always use voice isolation. This is an amazing tool that's only available on Final Cut, and that just looks for my voice and pulls everything else down. So it, it really helps bring my voice out of the background, and it is one of the best tools you can use if you're vlogging or doing work like this. If you want background noise, record it separately, add it in separately, get your voice isolated and make it really good. There's a few times that I don't use it, but in general, unless I'm like completely isolated in the studio with a microphone right in front of me, it just cleans things up so much. And then I do use an equalizer and do a little bit of bass boost, if you're really having problems, instead of bass boost, you can do voice isolation through the equalizer as well, and that helps get rid of the highs and lows, but I find that just doing a bass boost just, just gives me back my normal voice a little bit because the microphones do trim a little bit out. So that's why I'm using, that's why it sounds as good as it does in the wind. In this case, I was really afraid that I couldn't record, but it was to the point it was blowing my hat off, things were hitting me in the face, the dirt actually hurt. We ended up having power outages, brush fires, like the emergency stuff. It was a very rough day because of the wind. And yes, wind blows mosquitoes away, so if that happens to you, you're definitely going to have a mosquito-free day. Everything else may go wrong, but that will be okay. So, where we were. So if you're on a place like Ometepe, where you're just surrounded by water, you don't, you, you're very, very rural, uh, there's a lot of opportunity for standing fresh water, and you're going to get mosquitoes. This is the tropics. So you got to be very aware of that. So where you go is going to make a big difference. Um, and, and even out here, like you go to Las Pinitas, where I used to live on the beach, much of the beach, you're like, yeah, of course you see mosquitoes, but it's really minor. And then other places you go that may be a back road, a place where they're not maintaining things so much, and suddenly it'll be swarms. Because if you do nothing, they're going to be swarms, and they're nasty. But Nicaragua, like many of the countries here in this region, they know how bad mosquitoes can be, and because of that, they put in a lot of effort to curtail that. First of all, the population just knows that you got to do things about mosquitoes. If you leave standing water, you're going to end up with mosquitoes, and that's not pleasant. So they kind of encourage you, they, the mosquitoes, uh, encourage you to do things about it yourself. But that doesn't stop your neighbors. So if you have an abandoned property or something, that can be a risk. Well, this is where the government comes in. And one of the things I love about living here in Nicaragua, they go door to door on a regular basis. They knock on the door and they inspect houses for standing water opportunities. They look for, even in potted plants, and they say, oh, this potted plant is a little bit too moist. You gotta have some kind of treatment on the soil. Or this one is too moist. You shouldn't be watering it this much, right? Like they're gonna help you with some of those things. They're gonna teach you, like it's an education thing. If you don't have the tools you need, they'll give you the tools. The tools being uh, anti-mosquito, um, like they have they have treatments that'll kill the mosquitoes. They have things to put in water that you can drink, but it'll kill mosquitoes just in case you have to have emergency water that's standing. They'll check that tanks seal up. They'll check for leaks, all kinds of stuff. They'll look for things because they're trained for it. And they'll come to your house and be like, hey, did you know you have a sink? It's leaking down here. You can get mosquitoes. You're like, what? Um, so it's really actually fantastic what they do. And then they'll, whatever you need, they're going to help you. Uh, and then if they go to abandoned properties, they're going to go inspect those. And they're definitely, you know, uh, authorized to go in and treat for mosquitoes and look for those things. And in some cases, it's just like standing water. Oh, this has been left. Then dump it out, right? Get it so the sun is on it. And then you don't have mosquitoes. They do those things. And then the city goes around fogging. Um, and it depends where you live, how they do it. But generally, they fog uh, the public spaces like the roads, rivers, you know, wooded areas, brush areas, but they also fog your houses on a regular basis. Now, depending on where you live, you may need to do that through a private service or the government may do it. When I lived in Granada, the government did it because I lived on a main public street. When I lived in Labo Rio, I think the government did it because, again, main public street. But now I live off the main public street. It would be a pain for the public uh, fumigators to do it. So we have it done privately, but no big deal. Um, it's I've definitely seen the public spaces have it done in Leon. I'm sure they do it all over the country. Um, but so this combination of things, a little bit of effort, you really end up with very few mosquitoes. You will have mosquitoes. Under no situation are we completely eliminating mosquitoes. There's nowhere in the world that has managed to do that. Um, there are places that are looking at some really extreme measures because they end up with much more dangerous situations than we do. Uh, and they're only looking at like 99 
slightly higher uh, percentages of potential reduction and at those levels they're really afraid of what it might do to the ecosystem. Here we're trying to get them away from the human populations only. Uh, and so they're still out there, you go to wild areas, so be aware, as a tourist or as someone who may want to live in the country, you may push yourself to live in a spot where you end up with a number of mosquitoes. So it's important to be aware. And Alan, who watches the show and has been on the show, he uh, at one point lived in Ponaloya, which is near Las Bonitas, it's the other beach, and was directly against a uh, an abandoned marshy area and that the marsh just so many mosquitoes. So it was a terrible experience. But us on Las Bonitas, a walking distance away, uh, could live on the beach all the time, and mosquitoes were really not a thing. So if you're if you're really worried about mosquitoes, it's something you have to be very, and you should be, right? Mosquitoes are annoying. When I lived in Texas, I lived in Carrollton, Texas, the northern suburb of, of, of Dallas, and living there, we had to fumigate three times a day, and it did very little because all of our neighbors weren't fumigating. We had a river nearby. They weren't fumigating that. The city wasn't treating. We didn't have government treating things, so all the government spaces were just uncontrolled, and all they would do is, they, yeah, they'd put up little signs that say, beware of West Nile, beware of Zika, and they'd put up little collectors, and they'd say, oh, yep, we discovered there's West Nile currently in your neighborhood, too bad for you, right? And that was like the whole thing. It was just too bad for you. They didn't have a process for treating it. They didn't have a plan. They didn't educate the community. They didn't give tools. They didn't give education. They didn't provide anything. And, and so we were stuck. And we only knew to fumigate the way that we did because we had lived in Nicaragua. And so we did our best to replicate what they were doing, but on a scale that we didn't control. And that, that just didn't work very well. So we lived in a world where the worst mosquitoes I've ever witnessed were with us fumigating three times a day, um, right in the city of Dallas, or right in Carrollton, in the city, uh, which is part of North Dallas. It just, it was awful. And so, so glad to be here, where when we experience uh, mosquitoes, they're typically, typically managed pretty well. If you do get into a situation where there's a lot of mosquitoes, you just move on, right? I know, like, here's a side street, there tends to be mosquitoes, I don't hang out there. Sometimes when I'm all walking, you guys see me, I walk all over the place. I will have moments where I'm like, oh, there's mosquitoes here. But it's never out for a whole walk. It's I like walked through a spot where there's a little bit of water somewhere. There's a bunch of shade and there's mosquitoes hanging out and, and you just get out of there. Uh, so overall, um, and I'm really confident in this, Nicaragua has an amazing handle on mosquitoes. And under normal situations, the average median person, the mean person, in both cases, are going to be in an extremely good mosquito scenario. If you're coming from Europe, you may find this entire region just has so many more mosquitoes than you're used to because Europe has extremely few. But if you're coming from North America, unless you're coming from total desert, um, nearly all of North America, the, the huge majority of the United States and nearly all of Canada has so many more mosquitoes than we have in Nicaragua. Not than we would have if we didn't treat that would probably be worse. I'm not actually sure though. It, it may actually be lighter. We just have worse diseases with them. Uh, but the number that you have in reality for most Nicaraguans just isn't that much. And, and yes, we sit outside. We spend a lot of time in the garden. We spend a lot of time out on the beach. We're outside a lot living in Nicaragua and our houses are wide open. Remember, we don't have screens on the windows. I have screens on these windows, but not the other. Like if I open up, I'm wide open throughout the day. So yes, there's screens behind me, but that is isolated overall. We are wide open. Our doors are wide open. Our windows are wide open. So if there are mosquitoes outside, there are mosquitoes inside. And it happens from time to time. But it's, it's so low, you would never consider that in North America. You would never live in New York where I grew up and not have screen on, screens on your windows. That would be horrible. Here, it wouldn't even occur to us to put screens on the windows. Like, well, of course you don't put screens. Well, why would you do that? Right? It just, what are you protecting against? It doesn't matter. So we don't do that. And sitting outside, having this completely outdoor lifestyle... I find that I use, like, off, you know, the, the mosquito repellent maybe once every four to six months. Once every four to six months. I would use it much more in New York, even with living in screened-in areas. Uh, now, you know, Paul, my business partner, he puts it on himself every day. Right, so some people are more sensitive, and maybe it's not just mosquitoes that he's annoyed by. But I'm at a point where I don't notice the mosquitoes, um, the mosquitoes that we do have uh, when we've been treating. If, again, if we go to the beach and you get those swarms, they're different mosquitoes. I definitely notice them, and they're like awful. But under normal situations, like when I'm here at home, the mosquitoes that we end up with when we, when it's all treated tend to be very small, and I'll be like. Oh, there's a mosquito here. I don't even notice if I'm getting bitten or not. Maybe I'm not getting bitten. Maybe that's the thing. But it seems to be that um, the, the amount that mosquitoes make you itch here, 
my experience has been it's far less. Now, if I go out to the beach, other things will bite you on the beach. So I notice that my feet itch. That's not mosquitoes normally. It's something else that's that's stinging me or biting me or I don't know, sand fleas or something. Um, and you get those on the beach. But the moment I'm not on the sand, I can just be 20 yards away and I don't get that at all. So I know it's very much isolated uh, to being barefoot on sand for long periods of time. Uh, but yeah, overall, I... I I've you know spent time in Chinadega, spent time in Esteli, spent time in Hinotega, Hinotepe, uh, Didiamba, uh, Managua. None of those places do I notice that there are mosquitoes. And in the very isolated moments that I do, it's like wow, this very specific spot has enough mosquitoes that I really notice. It's you know because we're outside all the time, we're always kind of aware that there's a few mosquitoes around because. We're just so exposed and you get used to it and you really don't worry about it after very long that it's just not a thing. But had I been living in New York, the same situations, I'd be like, these mosquitoes are terrible. One, because I'm normally hidden behind screens. And two, the moment you're outside, they're all like, Whoa. and uh, and they're not treated. And it's just, it, it's a very different experience. The, the absolute lack and lack of worry about mosquitoes here is actually one of the driving things that makes this region so nice that you're able to be outside and mosquitoes are for the most part, very little concern. Certainly not zero. Certainly don't ignore that if you're in swarms of mosquitoes, get away from them, um, put on the off, do all those things. Yes, but don't think that experiencing isolated spots, especially the outdoorsy, specialty, touristy spots like Ometepe or anything on the, on the banks of Lago Nicaragua are indicative in some way of what the country is like. They are not at all. Yes, we're very aware that there are terrible places where we can't treat for mosquitoes and they get a lot of mosquitoes. But where people actually choose to live, partially because of where the mosquitoes are, are places that we can treat and generally have very few mosquitoes. But if you're gonna buy somewhere, make sure that that's something that you're aware of. Are you next to a river where it's hard to treat? Is it an area where there tends to be a lot of standing water and there's just going to be mosquitoes? Those places exist. Make sure you check for that before you purchase. If you're, if you're renting, often it's not a big deal. And if you are in a place where there's a population, not if you're in a wild area, Alan was in a situation where there's really nothing he could do. But if you're in a spot where like you've got a neighbor, you think the mosquitoes are coming from there, you can call the city. Be like, what can we do? You can talk to your neighbor. Be like, let's figure this out. It's a, it's a different environment. Mosquitoes are taken very seriously because, that's my next thing, we do have a few major diseases that are passed by mosquitoes. Everyone does. Mosquitoes pass disease. It's just the nature of mosquitoes. But here we specifically have malaria, which you're all waiting for me to say. We have dengue and we have chikungunya. Basically, we have those three. We don't really have Zika. We don't really have West Nile. We don't worry about those. They're not. They're mild compared to what we have, so that's partially why we don't care. Uh, but but those really don't have a presence here of note. But the, we have the big three. What we really importantly don't have, which is far worse than those, is yellow. Yellow fever is also a mosquito-borne illness. It is not endemic to this area. So if you're traveling to or from Nicaragua. You do not trigger anything with yellow fever. Even Panama, you don't worry about yellow fever. Nothing in North America, to the best of my knowledge, nothing in the Caribbean. It is South America and parts of Africa have, I'm sure there's parts of Asia as well, very isolated, uh, that have concerns about yellow fever. So if you're traveling to or from those places, those places may trigger a need for the vaccine. And trust me, if you need a vaccine, you want the vaccine. It's not something you want to play around with. Um, if you're coming back from those places, countries like Nicaragua are going to be like, yeah, you need to have a yellow fever vaccine because they don't want you spreading it. Here, yellow fever has a very high fatality rate. The others do not. They're very unpleasant. They're serious illnesses, but if you get malaria, dengue, or chikungunya, you're not expecting to die, right? That's not like reasonably on your radar. But if you get yellow fever, you're feeling like your life is being threatened. It's, it's very scary. Uh, but the others are just unpleasant. They're very unpleasant. I've had dengue. Um, pretty much everyone here has had some combination of the malaria, the least. I've never heard of a malaria outbreak, but we know it's a risk. Dengue and chikungunya go around in a cyclical thing. There are some vaccines out there. I have no idea about their efficacy. I've not looked into them. I've had dengue. Um, I know I'm at additional risk because I've been exposed, but it's not something we really worry about. Um, but be aware, right, that these are things that North Americans are often like, you have what now? And, and it just goes around, yes, but it's kind of like the flu. We don't get the flu that often. We get dengue instead. Um, and, and my own experience with dengue was that it wasn't that bad. 
Um, I, I had a serious fever. I was doing the show. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, I took a couple days off from life in general and just hid in my bedroom with the lights off and uh, it did pretty much nothing. Um, but it, it honestly was just, yeah, I was down for a few days. It's a serious fever. Um, but it was, it was not as bad as people had described it in any way whatsoever. Um, but uh, we, we do have those things to be aware. Also be aware, climate change has caused not malaria, but chikungunya and uh, dengue to move into the United States, and it's moving its way up through the U.S. So uh, being, if you have this feeling of like, oh, that's a serious thing, I don't want to deal with those things. I, first of all, I would say that's silly. You have plenty of different diseases everywhere in the world. These are not so bad as to make you have any decision making based on them. If you avoid them, you'll end up with something worse by trying to avoid them, I'm sure. But if for some reason it was hitting your radar of, I'm just really concerned about these diseases, well, you're going to need to go someplace like Canada or Northern Europe to get away from them in the, over the course of the next few years. Because now that they're spreading through the U.S., they are adapting to slightly colder uh, environments, and the U.S. is becoming a slightly warmer environment. So uh, whatever reason, they are moving north, and that is just the way it's going to be for the foreseeable future. You have this uh, these these pair of tropical diseases that are becoming subtropical and, su and, and warmer temperate uh, diseases. So overall... Mosquitoes, not a thing to worry about. Yes, there's a few things to know. Coming to Nicaragua, you will be amazed by how differently we view and treat and deal with the whole mosquito thing. We put more effort in so that it's not a problem. Yes, it would be terrible if we did nothing, but we don't do nothing, and so it's pretty good. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you would like to help support the channel. You can. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Miller. That comes directly to me and helps make this channel possible, all the things that we do here. And as always, it would make a big difference if you post it on social media, let someone know about the show, encourage somebody to join up and uh, watch the show. We have a just constant growth going on. It's amazing. Thank you so much to all of you who just participate and become part of our community here. And thank you to everyone who asks questions like this. If you've got questions, comments, get down there in the topic and ask away. We've had some good ones over the last few days uh, and uh, glad that, that people are providing the fodder for the show. I really need it because I love doing the show. I'm not in any way burned out, but I've been doing this for years, run thousands of episodes and constantly having to think of what I need to talk to you guys about on a regular basis is really tough. And one of the reasons I like when I travel because it kind of gives me a, a, a guaranteed topic uh, of just telling you about whatever it is I'm doing. So thank you so much. I will see all of you tomorrow. I'm Scott Allen Miller. Whoa. And I'm getting a little bit better at this. Four episodes should be popping up on most devices. Just click on one and, and YouTube figures out that by showing you one of my shows, it wants to show you another one of my shows. And that's just a great thing.